Hello and welcome to a session today on the scholarship that exists on Kathak and the literature that exists on Kathak. So how is it that we get to know about how antique a dance form is or is by the references that you can find to it in literature. Now dance has been part of the Indian civilization since time immemorial ancient visual and pictorial references are found in the rock art in the caves of Bhimpetka. There are several references to dance in the Vedic literature as well. Panini has referred to the Natasutra of Silalin and Krisisva in the Ashtadhyayi. There is a strong possibility that some of these texts on dance even go to the extent of saying uh, that Nati Shastra attributed to Bharat Muni predated Vedic writings as otherwise we would not have such sentences in Vedic literature as Mritya Sutam Gitai Shailusham. Regrettably the original works are lost to us but we can glean some of these facts from other texts that capture them proving to us that these lost treatises were probably the first codifiers of the principles of dance. Kalidasa's literary works of the 3rd and the 4th century and Kalahana's Raj Tarangini refer to dancers and their dance. Kalidas makes a reference to dancers being part of the rituals at the Mahakala temple of Ujjain at that time of Sandhya Puja, which is evening worship. He refers to this in his Meghdutam. Hyun Sang, the Chinese pilgrim who travelled across the length and breadth of India, makes a reference to the number of dancing girls he saw attached to the Sun Temple at Multan, while the Raj Tarangani of Kalhana also indicates the prevalence of this custom in Kashmir from about the 7th century onwards. Similar references are found to Far off corners of India in a Sam Yun Sang talks about uh, learning about the Devadasis there called Natis. Subsequent treatises included the Abhinav Bharati by Abhinav Gupt, the Abhinay Darpan and Sangeet Ratnakar by Sharangdev. They refer to dance and describe its position in the social and cultural life of the people. It is popularly believed that the etymology of the term Kathak lies in the root of the word katha or the art of telling a story and the most commonly used adage cited says katha kahe so kathak kehlai but the journey is not quite so straightforward it's a little more complicated than that commonly it has been cited that the grammarian panini in siddhant kaumudi wrote the sutra Katha Dibhyashtak, from which we get the word Kathaka. Katha Dibhyashtak means the one who is adept at the art of storytelling. Manu Smriti includes Kathakas amongst the community of artists. There is also reference to Kathak in the Harsha Charita of Bana. This view has been supported by the citing of several Sanskrit lexicons that give us the term Kathak described as the Kathaka variously as a storyteller, a narrator of drama and a solo performer. Chief amongst the three, amongst the lexicons that give us this definition of Kathaka is Shabdartha Chintamani, the Vachaspatya Kosh and the Shabda Kalpadaru Kosh. Certain other Jain works like O Papatika Sutra and Kalpa Sutra also cite the same. Nepali and Pali dictionaries use the word Kathiko to mean preacher, narrator or reciter. 
Several sources of literary evidence suggest that there were professional storytellers who used abhinay, song and dance while enacting and reciting. They were called by various names, kathakas, granthikas, gathikas and patakas being some. Kathaks are also mentioned in the 11th century Katha Sarita Sagar. This text tells about a king called Sahasratika who whiled away his time listening to a long tale told in a fascinating but convoluted narrative by the Kathaka called Sangataka. In the seventh chapter of the Sangeet Ratnakar, Sharangdev refers to the status of the Kathaks in the courts and their praiseworthy skills in the arts of singing and acting. But by the 14th century, while writing about the Kathaks, Acharya Sudhaka Laksha in the Sangeet Upanishad Sarudhara referred to their decadence and hence despicability in society. Actually, the frequent references to the word Kathak that we have encountered so far and which are listed in this section hitherto do not give any clear proof of the fact that dance was at that time part of Kathak's repertoire of storytelling. Natishastra scholar and theatre and literary personality, Dr. Braj Vallabh Mishra, claims that the reference in the Mahabharat as well as the Sangeet Ratnakar suffers from the inadequacy that it does not specify whether dance was part of the storytelling tradition. As far as Siddhant Kaumudi is concerned, he makes an even more dramatic argument, claiming that not only is it ascribed to the wrong author, as its author is Bhattoji Dikshit, but also that the reference here to, even the oblique to dancing, being part of the talents of the Kathak, is misplaced. The Kolkata-based scholar Nagendranath Basu in his Hindi Shabd Kosh and Radha Kant Dev in Shabd Kalpadruma mentions specifically that Kathak refers to a storyteller and not a dancer. However eminent Kathak dancer and scholar Shobhana Narayan begs to differ, she is of the opinion that there are two streams of Kathaks. The Pathaks who are the ones that recount tales in a narrative manner and, and the dharaks, who were the ones that recount stories through dance and mime. Hence, Kathak dancers are from the dharaka stream of Kathak. She cites two excerpts from the Mahabharata, in which we come across the term Kathak in the context of dance. In the Adi Parv, in the Arjuna Van Vasa section, there is a description of the profession of the Kathaks. Kathakashpare, Rajan, Sravanash, Manoksaha Divyakhyani Ye Chapi Pathanti Madhuram Dvija. Translated it means with the king on the way to the forest where the Kathakas pleasing to the eyes and ears as they sang and narrated sweetly. Here the emphasis on pleasing to the eyes is indication of the performing aspect of the Kathakas. But still there is no definitive reference to dance. The second verse is as followed. Nataka vividha kavya kathak khyayek karika. This verse is from the Sabha Parv of the Mahabharat and refers to the assembly hall of Brahma where various enactments of the story took place. The third verse from the Anushashnika Parv refers to kathaks as a caste of Brahmins and indicates their social status within the Brahmanical caste. It goes as follows. Gayan Nartakashai Va Plavak Vadakastaka Kathak Yudhakshai Va Rajan Narahanti Ketanam which means singers, dancers, rope dancers, instrumentalists, Kathaks and performers of martial arts are not to be invited O King to a Shrad ceremony concerning rituals after death. Further, Shovna Narayan draws our attention to two literary references from the 3rd and 4th century BC which refer to Kathakas. The two texts are in the archives of the Kameshwar library in Mithila. The first text is in Prakrit, written in Brahmi script and dates to the 4th century BC 
in translation it says in the month of marga shirsha in the shukla paksh nakshatra to the northwest of varanasi on the banks of the ganges the shringar dance of the kathaks in praise of god pleased lord adinath this too refers to the dance of the kathak as did the first one the second inscription she refers to is a 3rd century bc sanskrit shlok dating to the late mauryan period and it says anahat nritya dharmanam kathakcha devalokan it translates to read sound and the kathak whose duty is dance for the divine people further shovna refers to sculptural evidence to suggest that kathak dance was an ancient practice the sculptures of dancers from mauryan period show the mudras and poses including chakkars and costumes that are seen in kathak even today all these sculptures and references are from the period before the natyashastra she reiterates that all elements of movements codified in the natyashastra are practiced in kathak to justify the absence of the name of the dance in the natyashastra she argues that the natyashastra does not mention any of the dance form by name because it is a treatise in which all possible movements have been codified not a codification of existent dance forms dr brajwallab mishra however is of the opinion that the word kathak comes from a community of rajasthan called charans who were famed for their artistic skills of singing music and dancing and possibly these charans re- relocated themselves in different parts of the northern region as a result of natural disasters that struck their land disasters like famine and plague this aspect of its mobility was captured by the census of 1852 that revealed that banaras boasted of 100 and ayodhya of 50 kathak families in fact even earlier during the 1807 census of bihar it was discovered that 58 kathak families had made it their home even today there are three villages near gaya that are still known as kathak villages kathak bigha kathak jagir and kathak gram in fact the kathaks as a community showed remarkable capacities of mobility and the census figures of 1891 reveal larger numbers of kathaks in places like gorakhpur azamgarh raibareli and pratapgarh how does one explain the transformation of the charans to kathaks it was in the bhakt mala of nabhadas ji that we encounter the word charan in the chand that starts thus charan sharan charan bhakt hari gayak eta hua cho mukha chaura jand jagat ishwar mu jane this refers to the charan community of the temples of rajasthan who were leading singers of devotional songs they can be traced back to the 9th century in rajasthan among other temple performances and singers of devotional songs ballads and narratives who lived a nomadic life but lived in rajasthan are the dhanda dhandis bhopa bhopis mangnyars langas kalbelias and dominis in the commentary on the amrakosha it is mentioned by the commentator maheshwar that the word charan and kushilava are synonymous with kathak the charans used footwork in their performance the basic mnemonic bowl was ta and thai ta was short for tatkar thai was shortened to tha thus to their katha telling abilities they added these shortened forms of the footwork that they did which gave them the title of ka thak a title that they evidently employed in the course of their migrations the first reference to the word kathak comes in literary texts with the amrakosh edition from 1836 onwards the amrakosh edition in 1836 was published by medical hall banaras and edited by devi dat tiwari the word used was kathak and not kathak with the germinating dental to show a derived form but this has since been simplified to modern day kathak in this edition the commentaries on the charana satu kushilava sutra state that 
Charan and Kushilava, derived from the names of Lava and Kusha, Rama's sons, harking back to their ability to recite the Ramayan by memory, are also names of Kathaks. The word Kathak refers to storytelling only. The word Kathak has enlarged implications and entails dance as well as described by the earlier stated argument. Even in the court at Jaipur, Sri Radha Govind Sangeet Sar, written by the then Maharaja Savai Pratap Singh, who ruled from 1770 to 1804, refers to a form called Suddha Padhanti, which was in conformity with some ancient traditions. Some of the terms used in Kathak are referenced in it, and so it may be considered as the nearest treatise on Kathak. Later, Jaipur was to become famous for its 750 artist strong Gunijan Khana. Other temple performing communities who sang and recited in the temples were the Maan Bhats of Gujarat, who performed Akhyan, and the Kathavachaks of Ayodhya and Sultanpur, who sang and danced the narratives. While the Maan Bhats drummed on the copper pot and sang in a seated position, the Kathavachaks sang and moved around the temple courtyard, often accompanied by the instrumentalists who tied the instruments to the body to enable mobility. The art of the Kathavacha could be interpreted to be like that of the Kathaks. The link between these storytelling traditions and dance is not a well reflected one, as dance is reflected in the poetic traditions of the northern region. By the 13th century, a definite dance style had emerged and soon technical features like mnemonic syllables and bowls developed. In the 15th, 16th century, at the time that the Bhakti movement and the worship of Radha and Krishna came to be very popular, Kathak was used to narrate tales from the lives of these figures. Popular performances included Sri Krishna's exploits in the holy land of Vrindavan. It was in this time that dance began to be influenced by folk elements. Ras Leelas had a tremendous impact on Kathak. In fact, the Ras Leela of Braj has a very direct relationship with Kathak. The form of dance even made its way to the Kathavachaks who performed in temples of Ayodhya and the northern Gangetic belt. Compositions of poets like Mirabai and Surdas are rich with references to the activity of dancing. The Ashtachap Kavis actually used the mnemonics of Kathak dance in the text of their poems, suggesting not just a casual knowledge of the art, but deep familiarity with the dance. At the temple of Srinathji, the songs that are sung and composed by the Vagyakars are steeped in Kathak dance terminologies. The religious movement led by Sri Vallabhacharya and his followers had a far-reaching impact on Kathak dance. We will talk about it later in some other section. At the same time of the coming of Islam into India, it was mostly as a result of Hazrat Nizamuddin Aulia and the Chishti Silsila, that raks, which is what dance is known, uh, became part of the Sufi tradition. Dhikra or Zikra is the repetition of God's name as a meditative exercise. It was the prescribed me uh, method of devotion for the Sufis. Bhikra is usually done individually, but in some Sufi orders or silsilas, it is instituted as a ceremonial activity done collectively. In some silsilas, particularly the popular Chishtia silsila, music and dance were permitted forms of Bhikra. For this, in other parts of the world, the Sufis had been prosecuted, but not so in India, which was much more tolerant of such practices. Hindu practices being far older than this, which incorporated dance as part of worship. It is recorded that because of such restrictions, a serious argument took place between Hazrat Nizamuddin Aulia and Kazi Moyuddin Kashani during the reign of Ghayasuddin Tughlaq on the practice of the newly developed Kavali and the Mehfile Sama, where the participants entered into a stage of ecstasy reminiscent of the dervishes, for they twirled incessantly, much 
like the Kathak Chakras. Fortunately in India they found a welcoming environment and these mystical music sessions called Sema became a defining feature of Sufism in India. In Delhi specifically there was a particular incident that resulted in the inclusion of raks or dance as part of Sufi practice. Hazrat Shah Taki Nu, who was loved greatly by Hazrat Nizamuddin and who was also deputed as his successor during his lifetime, died an untimely, sudden and sad death. It pained the ascetic Hazrat Saab so much that he went into a depression and could not laugh for months. For Hazrat Amir Khusro, the happiness of his peer Nizamuddin Aulia was of prime importance. He was always thinking about how to make his guru laugh. One day, he saw a group of people happily moving towards the Kalkaji temple of Delhi, wearing colourful clothes and adorned with sunflower and sarson flowers, sarson as in, um, you know, mustard flowers. It looked as if they were celebrating life itself. Impressed by them, Hazrat Amir Khusro and Mia Samti both thought of making Nizamuddin Aulia happy by telling him about this incident. So they also took sunflowers and flowers of the sesame plant and composed a very special and very well-known composition in Shahana Bahar, which you all probably know, Sakal Ban Phool Rahi Sarso. Hazrat Amir Khusro and Mia Samti both came into the presence of Nizamuddin Aulia singing and dancing as they uh, presented the same spectacle that they had just seen. This made the Aulia smile and since then Rux has become an inseparable part of the Sufi tradition. The tomb of Hazrat Nasiruddin Chirage Dilli, Nizamuddin Aulia's successor as head of the Chishtia order was outside Shah Jahanabad in present-day Chirag Dilli, but nevertheless it drew large crowds of both Hindus and Muslims. Records tell us that during Alauddin Khilji's reign, entertainment and performances were so common at the shrine of Nasiruddin Chirag Dilli that during the days of pilgrimage it was difficult to find even a sitting space in the public enclosures gar and gardens on the banks of tanks, for there was music and dancing everywhere. At the Urs celebration of Nizamuddin Aulia, even today people often break into a trance and dance which is called Hal. The Sufi shrines become well-known centers for performance mostly of music but also of dance. It was when the dance reached the Mughal court in the 16th century that Kathak began to acquire its distinctive shape and features. Here it encountered other different forms of dance and music, more especially dancers from Persia who had come to India as part of Humayun's entourage when he returned from exile in Persia. Patronage soared as a social class of dancers and courtiers emerged in the royal palaces where dance competitions were held frequently. The environment of the North Indian Mughal courts caused a shift in focus for Kathak. From a purely religious art to court entertainment, dancers imported from the Central Asian regions spread their ideas to Kathak dancers. Kathak absorbed the new input, adapting it until it became an integral part of its own vocabulary. Kathak began to shift away from the pan-Indian dance form that was represented on most temple walls where the demi plie stance of most other Indian dance forms gave way to straight legs, probably taken from the Persian dancers. To emphasize the flamboyant and elaborate rhythmic footwork, as many as 150 ankle bells on each leg were worn. It was also during this period that the signature chakras or spins of Kathak were introduced, possibly influenced by the so-called whirling dervishes. The straight-legged position gave a new vitality to the footwork which wove percussive rhythms in its own right, whether together with or in complement to the tabla and pakhavaj. By this stage, the varied influences had introduced greater flexibility into Kathak in terms of presentation and narrative dance. As it moved away from the temple through folk dances to the court, it gathered many imbrications of the themes on which the narrative dance 
could treat its creativity, resulting in a broader catchment of material for Abhinay pieces and a less stylized and slightly informal presentation style, which often incorporated improvisation and suggestions from the courtly audience. The fusion of cultures developed Kathak in a singular manner, but although it was by now substantially different from the other Indian dance forms, the roots of the dance style remain the same, and as such, it still displays consanguinity with other dance, with the others, particularly in the hand formations during storytelling and in some of the body postures. During the reign of Emperor Akbar, Abdul Fazl wrote Aine Akbari that records the state of dance and music at that time. The seventh chapter, for instance, was captioned Nritya Dhyay, or the art of dancing. Aine Akbari describes the various categories of artists. There were several who, who were only musicians. Amongst the dancer categories, it mentions Natuas, who were employed to teach the slave girls. After Humayun's exile, in Persia came the traditional Persian dancing girls. Their descendants were called Lulanese. The other community of Dominese sang in Hindustani, as well as did the Horkinese and Hensenese. The group was like the Notch girls of the British time. Illustrations from the Akbar Nama depict dance extensively. In these images, it bears a strong resemblance to what we understand as Kathak. Under the later Mughals, there was a brief burst of grandeur for dance and music as it came to be performed and patronized extensively in the court of Muhammad Shah Rangila, who was a great lover of poetry, music and dance, even at the expense of state craft. He was married to a dancing girl called Lal Kumar and the important positions in the court were cornered by musicians and dancers of all categories. Outside Delhi, dance flourished in some of the regional power centers chief amongst which were Avad. Here, Nawab Wajid Ali Shah, himself a connoisseur of music and dance, maintained an atelier for dancers called Pari Khana. He learned the dance himself from a Brahmin dance teacher believed to be Durga Prasadji, the grandfather of Achan Maharaj, and played the role of Krishna in the Rahas. Rahas is the Persianized version of Ras Leela. His dance musical Indra Sabha was very well known he conducted deep research on the subject and collated all the materials into books like Banni and Najo. Banni had a detailed description of guts and also contained the names of all distinctive people who were contributing to dance in the court. The birth of the Lucknow Gharana owes a lot to the knowledgeable patronage of Nawab Wajid Ali. With their coming, the British did away with nuances and categories and painted all dance with one stroke. They called it in a generic manner by the term notch, from the Hindi noun notch. We find this word being used repeatedly in their diaries, journals, um, writings, reports and memoirs. Some of them painted scenes of the notch. Among them, the paintings of Mrs. Belnos are best known. The visuals look remarkably like what we know as Kathak today. The early British who had come without wives were very open to Indian dance, had performances in their homes, kept dance troops for their entertainment and even married some dancing girls. Among dancing girls who made it good were Begum Sumru and Mubarak Begum, a dancer who married Brigadier, later General David Ochthaloni, who was to become the British resident in Delhi. Ochthaloni was fond of the arts and a famous painting depicts him clad in Indian clothes, sitting and watching a dance performance in distinctly Indian settings. Later, things would change when the dancing girls were tainted with stigma, despite the fact that many of them had performed noble community activities, including building of community mosques and sarais, etc. Louis Rousselet, in his book, India and its Native Princes, refers to the kingdom of Bhopal, which was led by a Begum, as having a male dancer's troupe. These male dancers were fine, tall and handsome young men between 18 and 20 years of age, and they were called Kathaks. This is the only time that the word Kathak is used, which would suggest that just men were Kathaks, 
while the women were known by different names, including Nachanese and Bayadiers. Much later, the anti notch movement was to ring the death knell of the dancing girl, also called the Tawaif, the Nachni, or the courtesan. In fact, by the time Anna Pavlova and Ruth Sin Dennis and Ted Sean came to India early in the 1930s and desired to meet the dancing girls of India, made famous by the internationally uh, renowned ballet works around the Bayadere, there were hardly any to be found. In Gods Who Dance, Ted Sean did write about one such performance that he and Ruth were able to catch. That performance was of the Tawaif Bachwajan. Interestingly, the famed music conferences that marked the first quarter of the 20th century had an aberration in 1925. This aberration has turned out to be a very important historical moment for Kathak. In 1925, at the music conference in Lucknow, Pandit Chambu Maharaj made his debut as a dancer. It was here that his dance was referred to for the first time as Kathak which till then was restricted to the caste name. In Banni, Vajid Ali Shah had mentioned the name of one Kathak called Kanhaya, who danced in the court of the then Gaikwad of Baroda, Khanderao, testifying to the fact that even till then, Kathak suggested a community and not a dance. It was in this spirit that the patronage that Raja Chakridhar Singh of Raigarh gave to Kathak became a significant boost in the arm at a time when it was most sorely needed. Raigar Gharana evolved due to the great interest of its ruler, Raja Chakradhar Singh, who ruled between 1924 and 1947, and who himself was a musician and musicologist. The Raja invited many luminaries of Kathak to his court, including Kalka Prasad and his sons, and Pandit Jailal from the Jaipur Gharana. The confluence of different styles and artists created a unique environment for the development of a new Kathak and tabla compositions drawn from various backgrounds. Some of the renowned dancers of this gharana are Pandit Kartik Ram, Pandit Kalyandas Mahan, Pandit Firtu Maharaj and Pandit Barman Lal, all of whom danced in the Darbar but are today no more. However, there is a new generation of dancers that is carrying forward the unique features of the Raigar Gharana. The hallmark of this Gharana, which has a short life, but burnt bright as a comet, only to disappear as rapidly as it had appeared, lies in the uniqueness of rhythmic patterns that reflect associated imageries of its environment. Raigar was located in a very beautiful natural setting, and so many of the composition bear the names of natural phenomena. Raigar court also produced three intense tomes on dance and music, Nartan Sarvasvam, Tal Toy Nidhi, and Tal Bal, Pushp Tal Bal Pushpkar. Just before independence, Madam Menaka, a Bengali lady, inspired by the success of Rukmini Devi Arundale in reviving Bharatnatyam, and with the blessings of Rabindranath Tagore, worked hard to revive Kathak and take it out of the shadow of the stigmatized Natch. Rabindranath Tagore on his part at Shanti Niketan also invited the famous Jaipur Gharana Kathak Gauri Shankarji to be part of his university complex. Later Gauri Shankarji was to travel with Madame Menaka in the international tours. Prior to the 1940s, no book was written on Kathak. In fact, the name of Kathak hadn't come into common usage only. In the 1940s, small books on Kathak began to be published Rajaram Dwivedi's book on Kathak published in 1951 and Mathura-based S.K. Jain's book on Kathak, Natvari Nirtya are examples of early works. They were small, insignificant and they really just contained a few details, some songs, some bandishes. However, with independence, a lot more books came into being, especially on the gharanas of Kathak, but not enough. Most of these books are rehashing the old material for most parts, allowing for mistakes and misconceptions to prevail. Few have been written with a fresh and deeply researched perspective. You know that knowledge has to be dug deep constantly. So some important books that have been written in the early generation 
uh, by Kathak dancers in independent India uh, stem from the fact that they found it important to collate the knowledge which was fast getting lost in the wake of the onset of institutional learning uh, that was replacing the oral traditions of the Guru Shishya Parampara. Examples of such books are Tirathram Azad's Kathak Praveshika, Kathak Shringara and Kathak Darpan. They contain bandishes of most of the gharanas that he assiduously collected. More important examples of other writing by Kathak dancers uh, that I would like to highlight particularly is the translation of Abhinay Darpan into Marathi by Rohini Bhate. Uh, so that the fast widening uh, base of dancers in modern India would be able to refer back easily to the source works. Bhate also took the trouble of translating the autobiography of Isadora Duncan into Marathi, uh, Mazi Nitya Sadhana she called it, to serve as an inspiration. Later she wrote her own autobiography as well. But the need and scope of writing and publishing in dance remains not just enormous but critical. There is need for writing all kinds of books, books of personal experiences, books of um, analysis, books of records and documentation, autobiographical stories, lessons learnt from the way teachers of the old time taught and the way you have to adapt it for teaching of the new generation. So the scope and the need is immense and there is certainly hope that some of you might be amongst those who will write the new textbooks about Kathak, generate the new scholarship on Kathak. I have great hopes from you. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.